He will open the batting for Australia with Mark Waugh. Gilchrist will take strike. And uh, as Michael Holding said, the pitch looks very good. A little bit rough the outfield. But the umpires just organising themselves. Umpire Steve Bucknell and Billy Doctrow, his partner in crime today. Big crowd in. 25 minutes to 10 local time and the first ball of the second one international. And Ambrose loose, gets himself organised and Adam Gilchrist likewise. So the game has started. 50 overs each side and Australia desperate to get back in that winning mode. Well, this is the only the second one day international two in this country, Grenada. The first one on this new ground, obviously. So it'll be interesting to see how it does play. The workers really work hard to get this ready for today. And the Carl Hooper man is the second catching man. Two catching men. One at first slip and one at short cover. Carl Cooper was the field from there. First slip and Carl Hooper, who obviously isn't feeling too well, he's got a jumper on. Yep. Straighter off the mark. He'll just round his body. Carl Hooper with that sleeveless sweater. He did miss the first game with a touch of the flu. Yep. Cut shot. Plays it beautifully and that's a boundary. And he has crunched at the back of point. Over the top of it. And he has smashed that. Well this ball absolutely flies to the boundary. There's no chasing this one. If you're not there to stop it, forget about chasing it. That has gone like a rocket. Does play wonderful cut shots uh, out of Gilchrist, and none better than that one. No chance at all for the fielders there. Just that extra width there from Rion King and paid the price. Nice shot from Gilchrist. Leaning to the ball, and this outfield is lightning. So that is adding the proverbial salt to the wound. The previous delivery was a beauty, and then a boundary to end the over. Gilchrist has struck two boundaries for Australia, 13 without loss. Already Adam Gilchrist showed his colours, likes to get up to the deliveries, he's 11 already of just 15 balls, 7 off that last over in the West Indies, almost an out too as well, but that's the way he plays his game. And a gap of covers. So nicely timed by Marbury, and that is going perilously close to the boundary, and it's a boundary, it's a 4 to the ball and a 4 to the fieldman. So Stuart Williams, I think he thought he was going to get it quite comfortably. The ball just raced away. Well, Mark Ward just pats this one through the cover region there, beats the man at short cover. Williams gives chase and very quick across the ground. Does a good job trying to reel this in, but uh, loose turf and outfield out there just couldn't pull this back in. A good effort from him. It just shows you the speed of this outfield. ball. So five runs for the Australians and Gilchrist has got his square cut working beautifully. Well you certainly don't want to give him any room do you? It's just too wide, too short and he just hammers that through the gap at point. Just over the front line but just enough. It was called for, an, for a no ball as well. Just going wide of the crease and then bowling the ball just too wide. Big shout and Gilchrist is out. He's got to turn at the leg side. He got the leading edge and it just lobbed to first slip. Nobody was too interested apart from first slip and Carl Hooper. I don't think any of the fieldsmen realised what had happened. So did such did the ball just lob to first slip. Well, this was a soft dismissal there. Adam Gilchrist would be very disappointed in that. Tried to hit across the line of the ball here, whether it hits the back of the bat, leading edge looks like and it's just lobbed to Carl Hooper. The man had slipped off Carl Hooper. 
the simplest of catches. Out of Gilchrist gone for 17, and the first wicket down for 30. Dummy Martin comes in because of an unusual dismissal. If you look at Jimmy Adams, he goes to square leg, but the ball's gone straight to first leg, but very softly. And normally if the leading edge from outside leg stump, it doesn't go anywhere near first slip. And Jimmy Adams is the one that gives away how difficult it is for the Philson to realise what's happened. Martin just delaying the shot on that occasion, getting the single, placing it away from the backward square leg fielder. He found him with the previous delivery rather in and out career for Damien Martin when we first saw him in Australia on the West Indies tour of 92-93 he looked very much as if he had a long-term future in the Australian team but uh, he hasn't been, been able to maintain his place either in the test side or in the one-day side outfield is like lightning just came forward and eased it down the ground this outfield is like glass You're not going to be chasing too many balls on this outfield and prevent them from going into the boundary. I think it's a matter of having to do a lot of diving. If you don't dive, you haven't got a chance, because once it gets past you, that's it. I'm looking at the pitch, also, not a day to be a bowler. Not at all, not at all. I was speaking with Kurt Ambrose this morning, and he said that's not the pitch that you really want to be bowling on. He's through the offside again. Alfredon very fast. Won't go all the way this time. It's a big round, but it is, as we've seen already, very fast. There's the overall view of the new Queen's Park Stadium. And it is an expansive outfield, but very fast indeed. Nice flat pitch. It looks as if the crowd here is going to see a big scoring game. men now right back on the edge of the circle and although those men are there on the onside I don't think that is where Rion King wants Mark Waugh to playing those shots very strong on the onside Mark Waugh you want me bowling outside off stump if you can Damien Martin you still need to be bowling on off stump as well Down the ground again, we'll go for four more. There is no mid-on, and that went straight through where mid-on would have been. So two boundaries in the over. Eight overs gone, 42 for one. That's a very good shot. Placed it beautifully, got his body into position and struck it between extra cover and mid-on for four. Lovely shot by Martin. Good use of the feet here. Ball was actually drifting away from him, drifting towards the offside. Perhaps Carl Hooper did see him coming and try to drift it past him to get a stumping, but he made whatever adjustment was necessary and stroked it beautifully. And delicate. Lovely shot from Mark Wall, giving Shannon a long chase. It's a very quick output and he won't get at it at all. Well. Shannibal chased that down, but Mark Wall was such beautiful timing, and he got a boundary. Yeah, finally, the batsman getting the ball exactly where he wants it, and I think Shannibal's probably scared off a little bit following Stuart Williams' injury we saw earlier on. Fifty partnership up for these two, and... Very good running again. Australian running has been very good again. So the 50 partnership up between Mark War and Damien Martin. Damien Martin coming in for Ricky Ponting. Mark Wall looking for two. And immediately he goes back quickly. Football and athletic stadium in the background, bordered by the ocean. And then the cricket field, which is jam-packed. 
And they are hoping that Australia makes a big total in the West Indies chases and gets them. Oh, yeah. And got him. So Carl Hoover gets both Australian openers out. And Mark War again falls with off spinner. And he got down, he thought about hitting over the top, then he checked his and only hit it straight back to Carl Hooper. And Mark War will be ropeable with himself. But the West Indies have done well. Yeah, Carl Hooper's got a safe pair of hands. Halfway through the stroke, Mark War perhaps noticed the long on fieldsman, checked the shot, and just managed to hit a return catch to Carl Hooper. It's 85 for two. Darren Lehman comes to the crease. Both Australian openers have fallen to the offspin of Carl Hooper. Like that. Outstanding. I think uh, Darren Lehman's making his intentions fairly clear here. And this is one of the shots that we saw often in Pakistan. Hitting the ball very late and in a position that is usually very tough to reach unless you've got very strong wrists. And that's exactly what we're talking about. They'll be looking at two here and get it easy. Man has to come in from mid-wicket and that's brought up the Australian 100. Two for 101 of 22.2 overs. It's a pretty good start. Good platform there. David Martin on the defensive, but his defence not good enough to keep out that one from Rayon King. Australia 108 for three. So good delivery there from Rayon King. Damien Martin's on his way. Well, just coming back onto the pads and then onto the off stump. Just cutting back a little bit off cutter. Over goes the off stump. Damien Martin on his way for 28, and the third wicket down for 108. The captain comes in with Australia having lost their third wicket in the 24th over. Smashed away. Long chase for Campbell, won't get there. Just a little bit too much width now from Brian. Concentrating outside the off stump. Oh, Darren Lim loves him there. Give him a bit of room, just smashes that one through covers. Campbell does his best to get around, but just cannot cut this off. Shows you how quick this outfield is. A lot of ground to cover, but no chance of cutting that off. Another boundary to Lehman. Well, it doesn't matter, Steve Moore's still having his troubles. It doesn't matter how you do it sometimes, but it does knock the ball around. If you don't bowl on a seam up on a dry, abrasive pitch like this, well, all of a sudden that ball just goes to, it gets all scuffed up. It's very hard to bowl with for the other bowlers. You can see all the scuff marks on it there, by the side. Second attempt, Brian Lara, Steve Wall goes without scoring, beaten by two consecutive deliveries, and then find it to backward point, Leon King picks up his second wicket in consecutive overs, and Australia are 116 for four. Well, Steve Wall on his way, absolutely hammers his delivery, doesn't get over the top, but Brian Lara does a big leap, second, third attempt at it, grabs it, a very good catch here. Steve Wall paying the price, but not getting over the top of that delivery. And that's a good snare there from Brian Lara. So the captain's on his way for a duck, and the fourth wicket down for 116. So Steve Wall goes without scoring. Michael Bevan comes in to replace him. It's gone through. Long chase around for Campbell, and picks it up well. And finishes off with a fine return. Good bit of work by Campbell in the outfield. His throwing certainly has uh, improved. It's got stronger. 
it's gotten more accurate. Well, there's a good field. This time, Lehman hits it the other side. He has a big chase. We saw him go to his left the last time, but this time he's got to go to his right. And a good pick up and a good throw as well. A bit of assistance there, too, for the breeze that side of the ground, Chu and Campbell, but still a good field and still a good throw. Uh, well played, Darren Lehman. Brilliant shot. It was a full toss. He didn't try and hit it too hard. He just let the pace of the ball do the work and just placed it superbly. Four runs to Lehman. He goes to 29. Darren Lehman, the master of touch. Yeah. Nice shot. Ball killed it. And two runs. Stuart Williams doing a brilliant piece of field to get mid off. 28 overs gone, 131 for four. Wait. Kevin can't get it fast, Atherton. So no slip, and past Jimmy Adams, left hand as well, but a four to end the over, 138 for four. Well played by Lehman, no man at mid on on the fence, and that may go all the way here, struck that beautifully, and that's a four to finish the over. So at the end of the over, Lehman goes to 43, Bevan on 14, Australia 154 for four. away down towards the boundary for four that really was a big cross batted hoik but well hit as soon as you saw it a bit short and offline no problems playing shots like that on pitches like this pace and bounce so consistent not a lot of protection for Henry Bryan on the onside so nothing really wrong with playing that particular shot was why the wall stump, but the length was what made it easier for him to pull it through the onside. So he's gone to within two of a half century here. And that will be it. Picking up the two to raise a very good 50 for Darren Lehman. Fifty and in very good time. Strike rate of over hundred at the moment, Darren Lehman. Only 48 balls. That raises the 50 partnership between Bevan and Lehman. In the 36 over of the innings. slips and that's the perfect one day shot gone away for four so things beginning to pick up here few occasions now that we have seen Michael Bevan hit the ball through that slip cordon and of course in this format of the game very safe shot looking to push the ball wide above Tom Phil Simmons and most of the bowlers so once he edges it it will go pretty wide of Jimmy Adams who is the wicket keeper Very fine down towards third man and it's gone right to him. Rion King down there where he should have made the save. So giving away what uh, would be an additional two runs. They were coming back for the second. destroying raises uh, the Australian 200 right on target didn't have to move Jimmy Adams that's beautifully shot that's a superb shot found the gap between mid-off and extra cover timed it beautifully 
from the time it left the bat it was four. That was well placed and beautifully timed. By nowhere half volley, but he played through the line of the ball, just opening the face as well, Michael Bevan. And it's a lovely shot, brilliant shot, four runs. So these two players are in special form at the moment. And the 100 partnership comes up. 100 balls, 100 runs. Well, they're picking the gaps beautifully. Uh, great shots. This one here, Bevan just steers that exactly where he wants it to. Man at mid-off, no chance cutting that up. Straight to the boundary for four. There's 169 minute, 100 balls. That's his 50, Michael Bevan. 50 from 53 balls. So the partnership, very good. 103 from 104 balls. The partnership in just 70 minutes. And Lehman smashes him over mid wicket. And brilliant. So that'll create some problems for Ambrose and Adams. The end of the 43rd over, 220. Lehman stands and delivers and just as I said, Lehman is due to hit a six. And that is a big six on this ground. Well, like Babe Ruth said, there's more room in the air. Aaron Lehman opts to smash this one flat. Not a lot of height on this. There's a man sort of out there. And to mid-wicket, deep mid-on. And he dissected both. Lara can't feel that one. They look for two. Bevan comes back easily. Kirtley Ambrose does the fielding down at deep mid on. So already got off to a good start this over. Nine already from the three deliveries. Lehman comes down and slaps it straight. Ambrose has a long chase. We may be able to stop with his big foot. He does. The size 14s do the work. Just two runs to Lehman. But the run's coming pretty comfortably now for the Australians. <laughs> Lehman keeps the strike on this occasion. 12 runs from the over. Lehman goes to 89, Bevan on 60, 253 for four. slap that to the boundary well that is very annoying for the bowler and that takes away any nervousness in the 90s I would have thought he goes to 96 with a reverse sweep so then the other Australia 264 for four and an edge from Michael Bevan goes towards the boundary and it's such a fast outfield that will get there so four runs, and Devon goes to 67. Well, he's got this one really fine. A little bit of spin on that one, that's a genuine edge. But straight through the vacant position there, and down for four more runs. Full toss again. Showing that sometimes full tosses are quite hard to hit. Michael Bevan only able to get the single to long on. So Lehman, 87 balls for his 97. Seven boundaries and a six. And that's in the air straight. A chance for Shandipur to take the catch. It'll be a spectacular catch. It's not. He brings up his hundred. So Darren Lehman hits two boundaries in the 90s to bring up his hundred. And... What an innings that has been by Darren Lehman. His second one-day international hundred. He can't make the 15 to tour, the Test series, but he is a very, very good one-day player. Well played, Darren Lehman. Well, he's just worked the ball beautifully here today. Struck the runs for the boundary that really needed to be picked. The gap beautifully. That one there was in the air. 
a very difficult chance, 101 runs, 88 balls, 8 boundaries, 8 balls and a 6. He'll look for 2, Darren Lehman, and it may go for 4, it has. So Darren Lehman may be fatigued and a little bit stressed, and he's puffing and puffing and getting some wind into his lungs. The two boundaries in that over, he brought up his second one day hundred. Australia with one over remaining, 279 for four. Darren Lehman, uh, some anxious moments. He was on 97, and Shandable had a, a sniff of a chance. Couldn't get it, and he brought up his 100. And Michael Bevan's swinging hard through the offside. Campbell, a good field again out there. The sweeper on the point. He's done a good job. A lot of ground to cover. Gets over it very quickly. Now Michael Bevan moves on to 70 from 72. So a single to extra cover again. Australia now with a record fifth wicket partnership against all sides. The partnership of 166. You can see the climbing towards the end of the innings. Spectacular batting by two left-handers. Australia's highest total against the West Indies is 286 for nine in Guyana in 1995. So Steve Waugh spoke at the toss about partnerships. Well, he's got his wish today. And just a single again. Well, it makes all the difference, doesn't it, when you can stay out there, keep the same two guys rotating the strike. The earlier ones there, the wicket just getting the start and the wicket's falling and then finally they got that partnership going, these two. And Darren, Darren, saying to himself, wasting the ball. Last ball of the innings. And Keith Arthur wants to find out what Darren Lehman was thinking. So he called a no ball to start with and realised that the ball hadn't been delivered, so it was a no, no ball. So now Keith Arthur knows what Darren Lehman is thinking. So can he prevent a boundary off the last ball? Going towards the uh, backward point fence and it's a boundary. So Arthur and can't. So well played by Lehman, well played by Bevan. A very good partnership by the Australians of 172 in 147 balls in just 94 minutes. Once again, Michael Bevan gets a nod out, but the stage belonged to Darren Lehman. A strike rate of 119 and a half. His second one-day century of just 92 balls. So the Australian flags, there are a few here, will be pretty pleased with what their side has achieved. Steve War won the toss earlier this morning, again, he elected to bat on what looked like a very good pitch, and so it proved to be. Darren Lehman, 110 not out, but Michael Bevan, 72 not out, Mark War hit a full toss back to Carl Hooper to be out for 41. King and Hooper, the wicket takers for the West Indies, two wickets apiece. 116 for four was the last wicket. And the West Indies now need 289 runs from their allocated 50 overs at a run rate of 5.78 per over. So all in readiness, 289 is the target. Michael Bevan and Darren Lehman, both sensational innings. Darren Lehman making his second one day international hundred and he will be well pleased although he is puffing and huffing towards the end of his innings i'm sure he's very relieved into the commentary for the first ball tony cozier and michael holding and in a while damian fleming to start off the west indies innings to sherman campbell here's the first ball
West Indies off the mark right away. Kind of target uh, that you would figure in normal circumstances would be very, very difficult, even out of reach. But uh, the conditions here suggest that the West Indies do have uh, a pretty fair chance here and that it's not out of reach and that 288 is uh, just about par for the course in these conditions. Perhaps uh, maybe let's say 15 runs more than par. So the left-handed Chandapur now in strike. Brilliantly taken. What a magnificent left-handed catch by Shane Lee. Sets the West Indies back right away. He hit that one brilliantly. It seemed to be heading towards the boundary and Lee somehow snared the catch. How many times do we hear catches win matches? This is a beauty from Shane Lee. He did very poor for the shooter Ryan Shandapal right off the middle of the bat and look at that. Going to his left, had no chance of getting both hands to it. Brilliant. Excellent start that for Australia. West Indies 3 for 1. A big reception for the West Indies captain Brian Lara, who finds himself having to come in in the first over because of a sensational catch by Shane Lee that removed Shiv Ryan Chandapur. This came right off the middle of the bat. That wasn't a thick outside edge or anything like that. But that was brilliant. Made good ground to his left, Shane Lee. They don't come much better than this. Outfield very fast. We'll go away for four. So Lara is on the way. Bit of swing for Damien Fleming, but overpitched and wasn't that beautifully struck. Too short. And this outfield very fast, even though he didn't get hold of it. It's the second boundary for Lara. Not all that convincing a stroke from Brian Lara, but not, not enough back onto the ball. Short, and as I said earlier on, on this pitch, you cannot afford to be too short, nor can you afford to be too full. This pitch pretty difficult to be bowling on. You have got to put it in the right spot. Played it on, dragged it on, Brian Lara. Disappointing end to a disappointing innings from Lara. And the West Indies are 18 for two. I thought that was on the cards. Brian Lara, a bit anxious in trying to get these 289 runs and dragging this ball from outside off stump onto the stumps. Bottom edge, leg stump, the one disturbed. Damian Fleming strikes again for Australia. And that's a big one, 18 for two. New batsman is Jimmy Adams. Comes in to replace Brian Lara. A huge disappointment for the big crowd here. And a boundary. Campbell has whacked that to the mid-wicket boundary and he has timed it beautifully. Very good shot. Sliding with the angle of pull rifle bowls to the right hander. Yeah, and slightly different approach to the one that the Australian batsmen used in their innings rather than using the pace of the ball these batsmen are opting to hit through the line of the ball not afraid to play across the line and they're really striking the ball quite nicely at this stage and no man in six area so a four even Michael Bevan couldn't stop that Once again, a big slashing drive attempted by the batsman, 
and through the vacant or probably over the vacant slips area for runs. Two wickets, the blue representing the wickets that fell so far for the West Indies, red for the Australians. And Jimmy Adams has pulled one out of the cupboard. What a shot from Jimmy Adams. He's been aggressive from the moment that he walked to the crease and that is the hook shot of the day. A shot that we didn't see Adams play too often during the test series, but he probably couldn't have hit that any better. And it's coupled with the outfield here just gone crashing into the signing. 50 for two. Jimmy Adams, 11 not out from this, 21 balls thus far. Round about six and over, they keep it there, the West Indies are not lose wickets, they'll give it a shake. And again, and we keep bowling there, we're going to get them in a very quick time, and that has brought the crowd alive again. Brilliant shot from Adams. And this is the benefit of the West Indians hitting through the line with the fuller balls rather than deflecting them. The bowlers have attempted to prevent the batsmen from playing the big drives. And consequently, the cross bat shots are being played with a lot of flair and effectiveness. And no fine leg. He's there, but he's not back. And that is a risky proposition. Both batsmen will have been aware of the fact that fine leg was up on the circle. And once the ball strays to that leg stump they're going to be pouncing on that and four more brilliant shot by Jimmy Adams racing away towards the boundary so another good over for the West Indies that's consecutive overs they have thrashed the ball into all parts of the ground 66 for two Down towards long on and gone for four. Hit it deliberately over the head of the middle wicket fielder. The shot by Campbell. Mm, but a turn that time from Mark Waugh. Surprise the batsman. And that also brings up the West Indies 100. 20 and a half overs. So finally Shane Warne being able to do what he wanted to do, that is get one legitimately through the left-hander and Jimmy Adams has been bowled. The partnership has been broken and Shane Warne bowled well in the first one day and looks to be bowling pretty well again today. He's getting the ball to drift, that is the important thing here for Shane Warne. This white ball being a bit of drifting and also just turning through the gap. Drifted away from him on that occasion and then pitched and came back in between the bat and pad. Look at that. That was well bowled. Jimmy Adams goes. It's 102 for three. And that type of dismissal endlessly on that day, Michael at Spina Park. And maybe it's the white ball that's helping Shane on. Maybe he's just getting it all right at point of delivery. And that is a beautiful shot. One bounce. And then another one and over the rope. So that is a beautiful shot from Carl Hooper. Plays these shots very well, Carl Hooper. Just the right length. Just wide of off stump and he goes right through the line of the ball. Very good with those extra cover shots, Carl Hooper. And lots of times they don't land inside the rope. So Campbell tries to whip it over the mid-wicket area into the vacant outfield and Shane Lee, a good change up of pace and Campbell pays the penalty for playing across the line. He talks to himself but it's too late. Ball by Shane Lee. Straight down the ground would have been a better option. Full in length here from Shane Lee, right up. Hitting across the line of the ball and once you miss, you're going to pay the penalty. Shane Lee really getting involved in every way. 125 before. It's 
Stuart Williams, the number six man for the West Indies. He's got him. Carl Hooper goes once more to Shane Warne. He took the Steve Wall correction. As I was mentioning during the course of the over, Hooper just popping it back. Steve Wall just slowing it up a bit. And another soft dismissal. So the West Indies have lost their fifth wicket for 135. New batsman is 100. One day international is Keith Arthurton. Comes in with the West Indies in real trouble here. That's a fine shot. Lovely shot by Williams. Two mid wicket for four. Sweet time of the ball, Stuart Williams. And he's chopped it on. Out without scoring in his 100th One Day International. And Australia now have a vice like grip on this match. 140 for six, the West Indies. Shane Lee, just short of a length outside off stump. Arthurton appearing to be trying to run the ball down to third man, inside edge, onto the middle stump. Australia now, West Indies on the ropes, 140 for six. So the West Indies are really pinned back now by the loss of uh, quick wickets. Campbell Hooper and now Arthurton. And that's gone. Got it through. The man on the square cover boundary might have just lost it in the sun. But uh, one of the rare bad balls we've seen from Warren and well put away by Stuart Williams. Spank it away and it goes all the way. Typical Phil Simmons stroke. Full of power. Aggression. Down he goes towards long off. Tom Moody comes in and should take the catch and does. So Williams tried to hit it back over his head. He did that, but didn't hit it long enough. And Moody took a comfortable catch. So Williams is out for 25. You're talking about wickets left for the West Indies. That was the biggest problem. The amount of wickets that they did lose. So I'm not quite getting enough back onto that ball, hitting very low down on the bat, nowhere near the middle of the bat. Tom Moody actually had to make ground to come in towards the ball and took a very comfortable catch. Westerners lose their seventh wicket on 174. Any Bryan comes in, but he'll go to the non-strikers in. Wide delivery and half volley and dealt with perfectly. Through the cover to four. Very nice shot by Brian. Certainly no mug with the bat. The bat ah! And that's close. And that is out. Well, Shane Warne's finally got his flipper to work. He said, I've been trying since I got here. It's landed it short, it's gone straight. The bat's has played across the line. And you don't bowl any better flippers than that. Works every time, doesn't it? Short ball, the batsman thinks it's the ball that he can go back and pull away quite easily. Look at that. Absolutely nothing on the ball, nothing to prevent it from just skidding onto the bat. Or skidding onto the pad. Throw him in a flash. One in a three for eight. One of the game's great comes to the crease, but not great for his batting, Curly Ambrose. Simmons slashes that to the fence. When Simmons wants to get the ball on the boundary, he gives it everything, and that's given the crowd something to cheer about. Cuts it very hard for Simmons. That bottom hand comes into play, and he hits it powerfully. No ball again. And Ambrose does well. Flips it away for four runs, so five runs to the total. Sweep 
tackle position in the shade. So just the single, now Ambrose will have the strike. Well, he had to get released, he knew Shane Lee took a lovely catch, but he was on the line now. The question is whether he carried it over the line, he got rid of it very quickly, realizing that he was going to step over the line. Umpire is going to ask for the television replay, takes it nicely, but he can't stop himself and just gets rid of it in time. Down the ground, there's a man out there, he can't reach it, it's not over. And the crowd's jumping here at New Queen's Park. catch it backwards square leg Phil Simmons goes Shane Lee having taken the first catch of the innings brilliantly yes. having taken another one brilliantly which didn't count now he takes another one which does and Simmons is annoyed with himself 215 for nine and that's just about it for the West Indies well another superb catch from Shane Lee Simmons flicks it away it gets about the man around the corner that went very quickly but a very safe pair of hands Simmons very annoyed with himself but there's been action of plenty but unfortunately for the West Indies it's a batsman that's gone Simmons out for 39 West Indies 9 for 215 Rion King now comes in as the last man for the West Indies you have to hurry the last for the television replay they reckon they've got him they reckon that's the match but just for formality Billy Doctrow has asked for the television replay and those long but tired legs of Kirtley Ambrose struggling to get home and the crowd waits for the decision but the Australians are confident that they've won the match. Well Ambrose did his best, Steve Ward moved the field in and as Shane Lee again, the culprit, it's got to be a direct hit and sure enough it is, it's left him about two foot short So just waiting for confirmation for the final wicket, which will give, there it is, Australia have won by 46 runs. And the West Indies batting, letting them down once more, all up for 242, halfway through the 48th over of the innings. Campbell 46 and Adams 40 gave them a little bit of hope after the early loss of Chandapal and Lara. And towards the end, Phil Simmons striking the ball really well with 39 from 40 deliveries and real entertainment as Kirtley Ambrose hit that huge six 23 off 19 balls good support from Rion King but in the end Shane Lee who had such an outstanding day in the field proving the decisive fielder with a direct hit which ran out Ambrose Shane Warren once more showing his uh, return to confidence and to form with 3 for 39 from his 10 overs Damian Fleming and Paul Rifle being expensive and also wayward with their wides and Australia always had the match in control once they got those two early wickets and once they had that score